Hey there guys, this is Sam and Justin at The Survival Review, and this is our final video encompassing all of Season 3 yes. of Twin Peaks The Return, and just our, our overall feelings on how how the season went, where it left off, yes. is, is going to be a big thing we talk about, um, and what we think about the future of Twin Peaks, if there even is one. Mm -hmm. Well, let's just start with our overall thoughts on the season, because this is basically what Dave Lynch said is an 18-hour movie. Yeah. So we're basically just talking about a really long-ass movie. Yeah. And it feels like a really long-ass movie. Yeah. But we were both engaged 100% <laughs> oh, the yeah. entire time. If I were to sit for 18 hours straight watching this, I don't think I'd be able to take my eyes off the screen once. <laughs> no. And especially rewatching it after seeing where it ends yeah. and going back and looking at all the clues and hints. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, even from the start of the first scene of the entire season, the scene where Cooper is talking to the giant, he mentions 430 and mentions Richard and Linda. Yeah. Like, I just rewatched that scene. I'm like, holy crap, this is actually a very important scene. Yeah, there's nothing that was just kind of brushed over for the most part. There are, well, a, few, <laughs> there are a few little scenes, but, but I, I think... I think those little scenes, at the end of the day, added more to the the universe yeah. of Twin Peaks. I don't know, I'm a little iffy on that stuff, we'll get to that in a little bit. That's fair. So even though I do have minor flaws with the season as a whole, and no, it's not like what you'd expect for the return of a sh of the show, it's still a very unique story in itself. Yeah. It almost plays off as its own thing. Because with David Lynch, he's never going to do what you expect. No. He, we knew right off the bat this wasn't going to be a nostalgic reunion of the cast, and yeah. everybody's going to be right back where, where we last saw them in yeah. Twin Peaks. We know it's not just going to be like, oh, there's a new mystery in town, and they have to solve it. Isn't that going to be fun? That's, that's not what I wanted, and that's no. not what we got. No, that being said, there were some things that I felt like I would have liked a bit more of. I wouldn't even say nostalgia-wise, just because of the fact that the first two seasons are a TV show. So you had these characters that you wanted to see continue off in another season. So there was a part of me that kind of wanted a bit more with some of those characters. Yeah. And would have enjoyed a bit more of that. But that being said, like, when you take it, take it away from that, when you take it away from expectations and stuff, it works on its own merits. Yeah. Like I said, not once, at least for us two, were we thinking, God, I don't like where this is going. Cause no. it just always... Well, we didn't know where it was going. Yeah, we didn't know where it was going, and it kept us... On the edge of our seat. Yeah, we're like, okay, the final episode's gonna be, you know, Cooper facing off with Doppel Cooper, and then that happens in the second, the last episode. No. We're like, yeah. oh, okay, okay, yeah. So I'll get. I guess we'll just get to some flaws, just to get them out of the way. Yeah. Um, there were again. I do wish some characters had a bit more focus, and some characters just kind of felt like extended cameos. And I'm not talking about the actual cameos, like Dr. Hayworth and the, I mean, like, actual, like, main characters you feel like they should have focused a bit more on. So, like, Norma and Shelly, who you think should have had a bit more, but, like, you have hints of what's going on with them. Like, oh, Shelly and Bobby aren't together anymore, but she's seeing this guy who's actually this drug dealer who we saw earlier on. Yeah. And that's it. And it's like, I kind of would have wished to have a little bit more of that, a little bit more of that developed. And especially, of course, especially the Audrey stuff. Yeah. With, with Audrey, it's a little frustrating because you really want to see where that's going. Yeah. At first, we were particularly frustrated on our first viewing because yeah. it felt so bizarre and, like, out of place. Yeah. Almost. It, it felt like it was going nowhere. And then where it did end up going, it had us completely hooked. Yes. By the end of her whole sequence, we were like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see, like, what happens next with this. And that's it. We don't see anymore. Yeah. And, and that's... It does get a little frustrating, but... Especially waiting until the last half of the season to even introduce her. Yeah. I just felt like, I don't know, like, why is that even there? I don't know. I, I, I'm glad that she's in it. Yeah, me too. I, I do like what they did, but right. if we're in a world where season four isn't a thing and it never happens, yeah. I can say I'd, I'd be a, a little put yeah. off by it, you know? Yeah, there's a few little things like that throughout the season that, like, I think, especially with the, the season finale, like, going so out there and being so different... I think would have been a bit more satisfying if the season was shorter and we didn't invest like four months into this thing. Yeah. And I think that's why, especially my initial reaction to the finale, which just wasn't the most positive reaction, I think it's because we invested, again, four months, like 18 or 15 like weeks into this thing and just to have like a lot of stuff not really resolved just felt a little dissatisfying. But I feel like in the long run, on rewatch, it won't be that bad. Yeah. I also feel like 
the things that weren't resolved are the kind of things where they're not really meant to be resolved. They're the mm -hmm. things that are keeping you invested in the story, keeping you invested in these characters. Yeah. The whole concept, it, it all goes back to like the death of Laura Palmer yes. and how David Lynch never wanted to reveal who killed Laura Palmer. Mm -hmm. That was the network that wanted him to. Yeah. And I think that the stuff that wasn't resolved, those are the things that keep you hooked and keep you interested and, and keep, keep you talking you, about it. Like, keep you talking and guessing. Yeah. It, and that's what makes a series like this interesting. And if you resolve all of that, it just doesn't work. Yeah. Especially if they do have plans on continuing it. Definitely. So. And this, I mean, I've been thinking about this show since it ended. Yeah. I've been like, putting together stuff in my head, looking at clues and stuff. And that's the best thing about this show. Yeah, you and, can look through the entire series. You can watch through this ten times and still find new things every time. I, I'm yeah. Sure. I know one of the things that some people might have had problems with, and you know, I think I mentioned a bit throughout some of the videos, is uh, Cooper's role in the show. Yeah. And honestly, the more I think about it, I'm, I'm fine with it. And again, just kind of a little bit of pirate, I guess, the nostalgia side of me. You know, would have loved to have seen Cooper this entire season, just being his old self. But the story they told and how the whole season is Cooper's journey to coming back yeah. into the world, I thought makes it all worthwhile in the end. Yeah. When you go into it expecting good old Coop the whole the whole time, yeah, I could see how that gets frustrating. But honestly, a lot of the stuff with Dougie and Janie and Sunny mm -hmm. Jim is it, some it's, of the best stuff in the series. Exactly. I, I love it. Um, yeah. So it's hard to get mad at a thing like yeah, that. Yeah, and somehow they made a character like Dougie like consistently entertaining. Something that I know some people like lost interest in it halfway through, and something that I could see getting very tiring and very like dull after a while, but somehow it all worked. It was yeah. still entertaining all the way up to the end. Yeah, it, that whole journey was yeah. was just fun to go along yeah. for the ride. That made it so satisfying when Cooper puts the fork in the outlet. Yeah. Like that made it so much more satisfying. Yeah. Like, this show just felt like an experience, really. Like, I haven't had this type of reaction to a show. Just, like, being that invested in, again, when he put the fork in the outwood, just freaking out over that. Yeah. <laughs> it was just so great. Yeah, I don't normally get that invested in characters in a, in a television show. Like, you care about what's happening mm -hmm. to Cooper here, and you yeah. want to see him come back, because that's what this whole season was about, really. Yeah, and Kyle McLaughlin just did friggin' amazing this entire season. Playing <laughs> so many different characters. Yeah. He played, like, three, well, three, possibly four, if you count the Cooper in the final episode. That yeah. was different. Like, so many different parts, and you can see the distinct characters in each of them. Mm -hmm. Like, you see Dougie, and I'm not just talking about, like, Dougie Jones, who's, you know, stupid and doesn't know stuff. Those few couple, like, few minutes where you see the real Dougie Jones. Yeah. It's totally different than Cooper or Doppel Cooper. Mm -hmm. And Doppel Cooper is one of the best villains in, like, anything in recent oh, times. Like, it can take someone like Cooper, he looks like Cooper, yeah. just, you know, little tweaks here and there. And make him one of the most intimidating characters yes. in, that I've seen in the show. Oh. So that scene where they go visit uh, Doppel Cooper in the jail cell, mm -hmm. to me, is still like one of the most memorable scenes in the season. It's even more great looking back on it now, seeing Diane in there talking to him, knowing what happened between them. Yeah. It gives that scene more context. It makes it like even greater. Yeah. And that scene was just so eerie and unsettling. This show, this season, really played up horror aspects, the unsettling, just eerie aspects of Twin Peaks. Yeah, and really gets you feeling uncomfortable. Yes. And, uh, like, more so than the previous two seasons, yeah. I'd say. Yeah, and more so even, like, in Fire Walk With Me, which also was a very unsettling movie. Yeah, that movie, like, <laughs> defines unsettling. Yeah. Right? It, the show, the tone throughout, even mm -hmm. though, like, it gets lighthearted at times, and that's Twin yeah. Peaks in general, but... Yeah. Yeah, overall, the tone was very unsettling. Yeah, the way it kind of balances, it, it's very similar to the original series where it has both, you know, a serious dark tone and a lighthearted, goofy mm -hmm. tone. And just like the original series, it doesn't feel too weird when it cuts from something goofy to something dark. Especially when, you know, David Lynch obviously had a lot more freedom with this. Yeah. And so you have episodes like episode 8. Episode 8. Where... Yes. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it's just like its own little masterpiece on its own. <laughs> exactly. And that's also one of the things I love about the show is that it just expanded the mythology of Twin Peaks even more. And like that whole episode goes into the backstory and how the evil came to be. Mm -hmm. And it was incredible. It was so surreal and just so bizarre. Like and our it, eyes were glued to the screen the entire yeah. time. It's so much more interesting to tell it in a unique way yeah. like that rather than just 
you know, having some narrator go, and then <laughs> the evil bug went into the little girl, and yeah, or just represents this. Yeah, and, or just spelling it out for us, yeah. like, oh yeah, that's how we came to be, this is like our little prequel. No, it's just like its own unique way of telling that, and it helps, has you piece together, like, the facts, and it just makes it a lot more interesting. Yeah. One of the also great additions to the mythology is the character of Judy. Yeah. This evil entity, which is, like, worse than Bob. Yeah. That was so interesting. And also, the greatest part is, is that it ties back into the original series, well, mostly Fire Walk With Me, with David Bowie's character, Philip Jeffries, mentioning Judy in that scene. And so it just connects everything more. It makes everything feel connected. And the best part is Twin Peaks is the kind of series where you can do that, because everything is so out there to begin with that, like, when you add in something in a new season that ties back to something that was mentioned in the original, it doesn't feel like retconning. Yeah. It doesn't just feel like forced or just obviously done 25 years later. It feels natural. And I feel this show is one of the best examples of doing a um, 25 to 30 year later sequel. There's something in that, like, all the characters' roles in the show feel natural. Everything about it feels like a natural progression from the original show. Yeah. It, it made it feel more authentic. Yeah. And the way it's able to incorporate characters and actors who passed away in between the show... Again, also helped out, like, including Major Briggs, yeah. which I love. They didn't just kind of, like, be like, oh, you know, Major Briggs passed away years ago and moved on. They didn't say, oh, well, David Bowie passed away. We can't really include his character. Yeah. They, they found a way. And that that's another thing that helps with, with Twin Peaks being such an out-there show. It, it's it's yeah. kind of easier to incorporate a character like that. You can turn David Bowie into a teapot and we'd yeah. be okay with it. <laughs> we don't feel like, oh, that's weird and distasteful. Yeah. No, it, it yeah. fits with the... the Serious. Yeah, or Major Briggs just being a floating head that says Blue Rose. Like, that's fine. And that's one of the things I just loved about it was it, it incorporated that stuff and it just it worked, even including stuff like with Bob. Yeah. Like, the way they incorporated Bob in the show was great and very unique. And again, Twin Peaks, they are lucky with Twin Peaks that they were able to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. A normal, normal type of show or movie wouldn't be able to get away with that. Mm -hmm. But they did, and it worked almost flawlessly in the show. The only absence of a character in the show that didn't work that we kept mentioning throughout the videos yeah. was Sheriff Truman. Yeah, that's the only one that really feels like I get that he couldn't be there for filming and they yeah. got the other guy. That's fine, but it is one of the only things that kind of takes you out of it every time they bring it up. Yeah, I feel like the should just brought it up like maybe once or twice. Yeah. And it's been like, oh, he's in the hospital and just moved on from it. And maybe every once in a while they'd be like, you know, Truman be like, oh, I just got back from the hospital, just like briefly mentioning it. But the fact that they kept mentioning that, oh yeah, the original Truman's, he's in the hospital, he's sick, but he's fighting it. Well, I, I don't think I don't they know. brought it up more than they needed to. I think that it's just one of those things that the nature of that whole situation yeah. is going to take you out of it every time it's mentioned. But when it was mentioned, it was kind of necessary for the characters in the scene. Like when Cooper comes well, okay, in. It makes and, sense with Cooper, but like, there's a couple like, moments where I'm like, you didn't really need to mention it. Like Maybe maybe I'm not remembering it. But. I don't know. I feel like could just like kind of just mention it once or twice and moved on. It just kind of felt awkward that they kept bringing it up you know especially since like we know he's not coming back it's it's like x-files in season nine when you knew david company was out of the show but almost every episode mentioned Mulder, and like just move on we know he's not here we know he's not here just, <laughs> just go <shut> up. <laughs> yeah basically <laughs> everything else with the uh, actors who couldn't be in the show we were handled like near perfectly especially with the log lady her role in this season was great and so well done and emotional and very bittersweet at the end so yeah, another thing we should talk about is uh, the finale itself, yeah. now that we've had a little bit more time to let it sink in yeah. and, and think about it and, and accept it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that was very not expected yeah. when we first watched that. But I don't dislike the, the finale. No, I, I like it more now that I've had time to really think it through and kind of kind of piece together what kind of is the meaning to a lot of the stuff in there. Yeah. I'm able to kind of accept it a bit more and actually like it a bit more than I did the first time I saw it. Yeah. And I've talked with several other people about, you know, how they feel and theories that people have. And mm -hmm. that's one of the best things about Twin Peaks is they're so... You could talk to ten different people and everybody has their own little theory of, yeah. of what's going on. One of the things I actually forgot to mention in our video, one of the things I really liked about the last episode is the fact that it brings the focus back to Laura Palmer. Yeah. Like, it all goes back to Laura Palmer, and I like that. No matter how big yeah. this world expands to, no matter the scale, everything still comes back to Laura Palmer and yeah. this house and the experiences that she had. And that's where it all ends off is her having the revelation of who, who she is and, and having it all come back to her at once yeah. and all those horrors. And 
I don't know, the, the last episode had a, a really unique uh, tone to it. Yeah, that ending is haunting. Yeah. And, like, I, that ending stuck with me to like, days after we watched it. Yeah. I just kept thinking about it, because it has this, like, eerie, just haunting feel to it. The whole conversation with the woman that lives yeah. in the house now, who, we find out later, is actually, isn't an actress. She's just the woman that lives in that house yeah. in real life. Which could bring up a whole other <laughs> slew of things if you want to <laughs> say, like, Oh, maybe they're in reality there, and Twin Peaks is all a dream. That's the maybe, theory that yeah. people have brought up, and that's that's an interesting take on it. I don't know what I want to believe, but <laughs> no, there's just, oh, so much. Yeah, but stuff like that is really the, interesting. Yeah, the fact that this might just be an alternate reality where Cooper is Richard and Diane is Linda, yeah. and just you don't know. Maybe that's it, or I, it's, we don't really know. No, it's. But it's not like a frustrating like type of thing. It's very just intriguing. That's the strength of a show like this is the intrigue. And if they just spell it out for us in that last episode and tell us, here's what happened, here's here's where these people left off, I don't know if it would have had the same impact. No, I do like that finale a lot more after reevaluating it. Because again, seeing that first time was a little jarring because mm -hmm. it wasn't exactly what I expected or what like I really thought was going to happen. But I really like that ending, I, especially that final scene again, just, like, it just sticks with me, yeah, and, and I love it. Honestly, any scene with that Laura Palmer scream, yeah. it just haunts you. <laughs> oh yeah, definitely. And also that brings into a lot of interesting ideas with the character of Sarah Palmer, who, and that's another thing that wasn't really delved into too much, yeah. but you kind of get the idea that she's possessed by Judy. Yes. Now that they finally reveal who Judy is, Sarah Palmer was one of the highlights of the season. Mm. And that stuff with her was just amazing, it's still one of the best images of anything Twin Peaks is her opening up her face. Yeah, that's one of my favorite scenes yes. in the series, period. Yeah. I have loved that scene. Now you know that like something happened with her that now somehow she got possessed by Judy. Yeah. Possibly she maybe she was that little girl in that, episode eight. That's kind that's of the, theory. That's the way I've taken it. Yeah. That's what I've accepted as reality. Who knows though? It's like like we said, it's not spelled out for you. Yeah. So you can kind of decide but for yourself. Especially since nothing really like moved forward with that little girl and why that bug like flew into her mouth or anything. That's what kind of makes me think that it's Sarah Palmer. Yeah. Because I don't know why they would just show a random girl get a. A bug go into her mouth, I don't know. And just kind of timeline-wise, it makes sense. Yeah, timeline-wise, it makes sense. So I think that's probably it, and maybe Judy's been deep down inside her this entire time, yeah. and she finally comes out, you know, when she opens up her face and bites off a dude's neck. Yep. Which is amazing. It's so good. <laughs> yeah, all, all the characters in the season were great. It was a lot of fun seeing the returning cast. Characters, you know, like Andy and um, Lucy were just a lot of fun. They're basically the same characters from the first seasons. Yeah, which and even even some weird little appearances from people like, you know, you've got their son who, yeah. who acts like Marlon Brando. and uh, Yeah, Michael Sarah's there for like one scene, and that's all he's in the entire show. But I love things like that. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's, I mean, you have to see their son and what happens to him. That was a big part of season two, that whole yeah. subplot of who's the father yep. that lasted like the entire season. You need to have some of that pay off a little bit. Great seeing Big Ed again. Granted, he didn't get a whole lot to do in the season. And even though it was really nice having everything wrap up with him and Norma, it did happen really fast, but I liked seeing him and Norma get back together. Yes. That was just great and so really satisfying. Really sweet scene. Yeah. Uh, one of the more feel-good moments in a not-so-feel-good show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe my favorite returning character is Bobby. Yes. Just to see his transformation yeah. from the original show to now. From being this, like, drug-addicted, like kid who killed a guy at one point in yeah. Firewalk with me to a cop, which is, it was so satisfying to see him turn his life around. Yeah, and I don't know, he, he became one of my favorite characters in general, and yeah. he, he was in my favorite scene. My favorite scene in the whole third season is still when Bobby goes out to the car <laughs> with the lady honking and the girl in the passenger seat. I what was that, though? Like, what was <laughs> I have no idea. I never will have any idea. <laughs> It was my favorite scene. I, was, I've never laughed more. That scene's incredible. Yeah, God, it was so good. Yeah, that, that might be one of my favorite scenes too. Like, <laughs> that's, I love it. It's completely off the wall ridiculous. And Bobby's reaction. And yeah, he, he's just like, what the fuck is going yeah. on, man? It works in this established universe of Twin Peaks. It doesn't feel out of place, which is no. insane for something so ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But all the returning characters I like. Again, I would have wished they had a bit more screen time than some of the new characters since 
most of the new characters got more screen time than the old ones. Yeah. I would have liked a bit more with the older cast. I guess that's one of my little minor flaws of the season. Kind of wish they had a bit more to do. But when we saw them, it was very welcomed and just a lot of fun. Even the characters like James weren't that bad. Yeah. I, I did not mind James. He didn't have a ton to do, no. but he wasn't bad. No. Yeah, especially for a character that is pretty much universally agreed to be one of the worst characters in the series. Yeah. He was he was fine in this. Yeah, he was uh, good. And, and I really liked the new character friend of his, Freddy. He was really fun and really fit in with the Twin Peaks. Yeah, all of the new characters were welcomed, and I, I love them all. Like, I like the new Sheriff Truman. Mm -hmm. I thought he did a really good job. Like, he just fit right in. He didn't feel out of place. He felt like he was right there with these characters. Like, it worked. And actually, the two characters who surprised me the most, because when they first appeared in the show, I was just like, yeah, it's all right. They're, they're just there. But the Mitchum brothers. Yes, the Mitchum <laughs> brothers were absolutely fantastic. God, I love and, them. And all their scenes with Dougie, and especially in that final scene where they witness the climax <laughs> of... They witness a guy with a glove on fighting a giant orb. <laughs> And, and they're just like, that's fun to tell the kids. It's great. Yes. <laughs> I love the Mitchum Brothers. What, what's going on? Took the words right out of my fucking mouth. Yeah. <laughs> I love them. Yes. I mean, they first appear, they're just kind of like, you know, typical mobster bad guys. You're just like, oh, it's Jim Belushi. He's, he's fine, it's fine, I guess. Bad guy. But, the other brother's kind of cool, but that's all they really are. And then they come into play near the end of the season. They just like, their characters just escalate, go up to some of the best characters in the show. Yeah. You also get great characters like Richard Horn, mm -hmm. who is so fucked up. <laughs> yeah, Richard Horn is... wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, also, um, with him being Audrey's son and possibly Cooper's son, yeah. we would have liked a little bit more of that. It would be kind of interesting to see what happened. So, I don't know what's going on with that, especially since they mentioned how Audrey's been in like a coma, or she was after like the events of season two. So, I don't really know what's going on with there, but that's another interesting idea. And that's also another thing that just makes Dalva Kluber even more of a fucked up character, that he would have a kid with Audrey and have it be that fucked up guy. Yeah. But that was another really cool character. Just, I liked all the new people in the show. They were all good. There are a couple of people who I think needed a bit more time to develop, like Becky. Yeah, I would agree to that. But um, yeah, she was still fine. All those elements just helped make the season very unique and stand on its own, but also be a good continuation of the original show. It didn't tie up the loose ends from season two, except for the whole Doppel Cooper thing, which was kind of the main thing we wanted to see tied up from season two anyway, so yeah. it worked out in the end, but you know, we still don't know how's Annie. I was kind of hoping for a bit of that, actually. I would have liked to see some of that, but what can you do? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it's probably just not too relevant to the plot of this, but I don't know what's going on with Annie. Like, last time we saw her, she was in the hospital, mm -hmm. and so maybe she just got better and just left Twin Peaks because it was yeah. so, such a fucked up town. <laughs> Could be. I don't know, so. But for a character that, like, you know, uh, Cooper was, like, in love with, like, yeah. it seems kind of weird that he would... But then again, we never really got much of him coming back to Twin Peaks anyway, so... Yeah. He kind of came back and then immediately left to, like, the lodge and to the whole season finale thing. Which I do kind of wish we had a little bit more with Cooper and Twin Peaks when he came back, I mean. Yeah, I mean, we were all kind of hoping we'd get a little bit of... Like, one of the things I was I was hoping for was seeing Gordon Cole interact with Shelley a little bit for all yeah. these years. But, you know, at the end of the day, kind of takes a backseat to the actual story. Yeah. I mean, things like that. They're fun, but I would rather see kind of what we got and how things played out. Yeah, it's still, it's still satisfying, and I still think an amazing season. Yeah. The most unique things on TV, mostly because of David Lynch, of course. Yes. It wasn't exactly the season three that we expected, but it's still an amazing thing that we got either way. They did have, again, some little flaws with it, but all the flaws I had with it are pretty minor. They're not major, they're not like major issues with the show. There's just little flaws I think could have been, you know, fixed up a little bit. Yeah. But overall, just an amazing season. Yeah, definitely unforgettable. Oh, um, yeah. One of the best things on television I've seen in years. Yeah. So. So, moving forward with the show... Yeah, the future of Twin Peaks, we... It's... It hasn't been stated whether there's going to be a season four or not David yet. Lynch did like, recently say that, like, if there are more Twin Peaks, it won't happen for at least another few years. Yeah. Which, I'm totally cool with waiting. Yeah. Like, because it took a while just to make the return. Like, that took four years of, like, writing it, then shooting it, and then, you know, editing it. Like, that took, like, many years to do. So it will be a while until we get more Twin Peaks, if we do, but I'm open to it. Yeah. You know, there's little things like they announced the Blu-ray recently, yes. and they titled it 
Twin Peaks, the third season, which yeah. they've never called it that. Probably. Yeah, they've never referred to it as season three, named like the marketing and anything. Yeah. And that and doesn't necessarily mean anything. No, it's... no, we could just be looking into it a little too much. Yeah. But this was always kind of thought of as like its own thing. The news reports called it like the revival or season three, but they always kind of referred to it as like its own thing. So it seems kind of weird that they would refer to it as the third season and not the bit. return. Almost seems like they're trying to, not necessarily saying they are going to have a season four, but keeping it open to yeah. the possibility. Yeah, saying that this is the third season of the show, maybe there's a fourth, because it didn't say, like, the third and final season. It just says the third season. And the idea of a season four, we're down. I have nothing against seeing yeah. this world continue. I absolutely love all the characters and, and where things have gone. And yeah, I, there's I, stuff in season three I like to see explored a bit more. I'm not saying totally, like, wrapped up and explained. I'm just saying explored a bit more, like yeah. the stuff with Audrey. I like to get a little more of that. Because I know a lot of people were, like, saying... Talking about the show, like what you don't, what you really expected the show to be wrapped up in a nice bow and everything. I'm no. like, no, I never did. But I expected some things to at least be expanded upon a bit, and not necessarily explained, but explored a bit more. Also, not saying that if it just ends in season three, that I'm so disappointed no. that they didn't wrap all this stuff up. You know, that's the nature of it. It's... No, yeah, no, neither, neither am I. But I'm just saying there is stuff I wouldn't mind seeing explored in a fourth season. Although we all know if he does do another one, it's probably just going to go in its own direction. Exactly. So, <laughs> he probably won't even explore anything you, for this you season. Can't, you can't have any expectations. for. You might have no. one little thing explored a bit more, and then he just goes off on four other tangents. Yeah, he does his own thing. <laughs> <things>. <laughs> totally new story. Which I love, because, yeah. you know... Who wants the expected? Yeah. Why would you... Nobody watches Twin Peaks, at least nobody who's still stuck around at this point, watches yeah. Twin Peaks for something that they expect to happen. Yeah. Well, what season three did was explore the mythology more, move the story forward in some ways, and in some ways it didn't. But it gave us a lot more in this world, expanded the mythology, showed us more of the characters we love. Maybe not as much as we would have expected, but it still did it. And it was just, overall, just an awesome expansion of the Twin Peaks world. And now it just gives us even more stuff to talk about. It didn't even tie up loose ends from season two, so we still have those loose ends to talk about. And then we have all the loose ends from this to talk about. Yeah, so if there is a season four and it's years from now, we'll still be talking about this until then. Yeah. So. There's a lot to discuss in between then, especially with the new book that Mark Frost is coming out with. It's coming yeah. out with another Twin Peaks book. So we still have more Twin Peaks stuff in the future, just not... Um, on TV. Until the possibility of a season four down the line. Yeah. That's really about all we've got to say about Twin Peaks at the moment. Yeah. Um, so until then, <laughs> we will see you guys next time.